The Artificer in Unearthed Arcana may very well be my new favorite. And I spoke with Jeremy Crawford about the challenges in designing it as well as the incredible fun in playing them. The Artificer is meant to have more versatility than any other class in the game. And that's why you'll see that in this latest version, you're able to swap out your cantrips, you prepare your spells, you have item infusions that you learn. Uh, when it comes to the alchemist, you're able to craft a homunculus that serves you, but then even that homunculus has different alchemical abilities that it can use to bestow various benefits on your allies. Similarly, the artillerist can form a turret and then that turret has different potential uh, abilities. Choice. Choice is really at the heart of the Artificer design because this is for the player who wants to play the ultimate inventor, the character who almost always has the right tool for the job, or if they don't have the right tool right now, give them a day or two and then they'll have that right tool. And so that's why as, as people have been digging into this latest version of the Artificer, they're seeing sort of everywhere you look, oh, there's a choice here and there's a choice there. Because we want this character to feel almost sort of like a mad inventor, you know, somebody who can come up with all sorts of zany solutions to various problems. With this class and with the two subclasses that we've just revealed, we're not only channeling uh, the Artificer as it originally appeared in the world of Eberron uh, many years ago, uh, but we're also channeling various other things that have been in Dungeons and Dragons for many years. Tinker gnomes, for example, in the world of Dragonlance. Major inventors, crazy invent inventors. Uh, we also have uh, the Is It League in Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, an entire guild in this world run by guilds that is all about over-the-top invention. This class is meant to model all of that and more, but that said, this version of the class that we've put out is more focused on Eberron uh, than the previous version of the class that we released. A big part of that is because of our release last year of the Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron. Working with Keith Baker, the creator of Eberron, I wanted to make sure the class did an even better job of portraying artificers, not only as they have appeared in the world of Eberron in the past, but how we might want artificers to appear in uh, Eberron going forward. Uh, and so we have started to explore sort of main, several main branches, branches of invention in the class. And so you see that already in these two uh, new subclasses. You have the alchemist, who is sort of a master of chemicals, uh, you have the Artillerist, who is a master of firepower, and we've already teased that we actually have some more Artificer content coming, which I can't talk about yet. Uh, Why can't you talk about it? <laughs> we're still working on what's, what's coming up, uh, but we're really enjoying exploring sort of the different corners uh, of this character archetype. Uh, if you dig into what's already there, not only are you going to see this amazing variety of choice that I mentioned, uh, but you'll also notice that once you pick a subclass, you have a pretty strong focus. Uh, so you have choices, but the choices then start getting uh, directed uh, in a particular direction. The artillerist, as you would expect, is all about firepower. Uh, one of the, the features that's sort of the banner feature of the artillerist is being able to craft or summon uh, a turret. You get to decide what type of turret based on a list of options uh, that we've provided. You can really also decide what this turret looks like. Uh, so it might actually look like a turret, but it could also just as easily look like a gargoyle that is spewing out uh, the different magical effects. And I really encourage people who explore playing the Artificer to customize the appearance of the things they make. Because we imagine the Artillerist to be a person who is familiar with the battlefield, and in the world of Eberron specifically, these were people who were on the battlefields of the last war, 
This is why they also are very good at creating what are essentially magical sidearms, that is wands. And so they are, they are adept at creating uh, these wands that they use to defend themselves and their allies while they're on the battlefield also laying down magical turrets and also uh, employing some of the most powerful damaging spells in the game. Because each artificer's, artificer subclass now gets a list of spells all its own, and the artillerist gets fireball and you know cone of cold and many of the other most powerful area damage spells so that they can truly bring the boom uh, to not only a great battlefield but to uh, a dungeon. The the alchemist, uh, in contrast, is much more about supporting a group with potent healing, uh, buffs, but then also some very dangerous acid and poison damage. Uh, so you'll see in The Alchemist that you get uh, you know, one of the most perilous area damage spells in the game, and that is Cloud Kill. And you can imagine this is an alchemist who might be unleashing this, this, this toxic cloud from a vial uh, because one of the neat things that we've done in the new version of the Artificer is all of their spellcasting must be channeled through a tool of some kind. And so you can imagine, again, that alchemist un unstopping a vial and out comes the cloud kill. Or the alchemist might have uh, a bazooka-like contraption out of which that cloud uh, is propelled. It's up to the artificer player to decide what do those tools look like, how is the artificer uh, marshalling their magic. One of the things that I think people will really come to appreciate in The Alchemist as they dig more is seeing the buff to healing that The Alchemist has. Uh, we've put into uh, the Alchemist's alchemical mastery feature a, a buff to any of the healing spells that the Alchemist casts, meaning the Alchemist can be a totally solid healer in a group that might not have a cleric or a druid or a bard. Uh, you can instead bring an Alchemist and provide the healing that your group desires. And then the alchemist also with the homunculus has the ability to provide some temporary hit points, some buoyancy, which allows people to fly for a certain amount of time. Uh, and then also uh, the homunculus has the ability to essentially hand out inspiration, uh, advantage on uh, ability checks uh, each day. Uh, so you put all of those together and the alchemist has a really broad kit filled with ways to make their group feel stronger. And when necessary, the alchemist can also unleash uh, some really formidable damage. Why do you think people are so passionate about the Artificer? I think people love the Artificer as a character archetype because, again, of its inventiveness. And many of us love mixing elements of technology into fantasy. Uh, I mean, it's sort of one of those mixing chocolate with peanut butter moments where you get, you know, this delicious uh, confection where you get, a, you know, you get a some elements that you might normally associate with science fiction or steampunk, but then you, you dunk it uh, into magic and it can be a really exciting uh, mixture of story elements. I also find that as soon as you lay before a player this idea that your character is an inventor. There's a kind of creativity I see unlocked in people that you don't always see with some other classes. And so I think that also really appeals to people of, I'm playing this class that is just making crazy things up. And I think to, to certain D&D players, that is just, you know, that's a, a place of bliss uh, at the game table. And also as they imagine the many different types of artificers they could create. Uh, I mean, because you, you can imagine one artificer might be a master toy maker and all of their spellcasting is actually occurring through the toys they create. Another could be a gunsmith of some kind. Uh, and uh, because also you can fire your spells through weapons that are magical. So you could imagine 
you know, a, a artificer who essentially has created a gun-like mechanism and is firing like their fireball out of it, uh, you know, and that kind of thing. Uh, so there are all sorts of different ways you can customize how your artificer looks, how your artificer behaves. The class's spell list uh, is filled with many of the most interesting utility spells in the game. Uh, so again, they also can show up in MacGyver, all sorts of situations, you know, like, oh, here's this problem, and the artificer is going to be the person in the party who's like, hmm, I think I can solve that one. Uh, and and you can imagine, especially a group that might have an artificer, artificer, an artificer, uh, or or a wizard, uh, or both, uh, the two of them combined uh, would be sort of an amazing problem-solving team. What were the challenges in balancing that? It's always challenging in D and D to ponder creating another official class because the game as it already exists was designed with the classes in the player's handbook in mind. And so when you bring in another class, you have all of these sort of interconnections that are already in the game to consider for this new class. How does it fit in uh, among those other classes? We always have to ask ourselves: is it actually fulfilling a storytelling archetype that the other classes don't already fill? You know, we, we have to ponder, would this be better as a subclass rather than a full class? Then if it is a full class, is it a broad enough story archetype to support multiple subclasses? Uh, we have to make sure we consider things like magic item prerequisites. For instance, in the Dungeon Master's Guide, there are certain magic items that require for the, that magic items use certain classes. We have to ponder, if we create a new class, how does that class relate to those items, if at all? Uh, we have to think about how does a new class interact with multi-classing? Once that class used in multi-classing, how does it combo with all of the other classes uh, that exist? Uh, we have to look at spells, items, everything that's already in the game and think, how does this class now intermingle with all of that material that already exists? And we also want to make sure that when this class enters the game, it feels like a natural fit, not only mechanically, but also in terms of storytelling. And we also have to make sure that while we make it exciting and, and you know, something people are, are really wanting to try out, we also want to make sure it doesn't eclipse the classes that are already in the game. So it's, you know, there's this kind of balancing act where we want, we want everyone to be happy that uh, the new person showed up. Right, right. Rather than like, uh, <laughs> what are you doing here? Uh, we want everyone to be like, hey, we love having this new member of the band. Thank you, Jeremy Crawford, for being on D&D Beyond and talking more about the Artificer. You can find that playtest material from Unearthed Arcana on D&D Beyond right now. I'm Todd Kenrick. Thank you for watching.